but I'm certain with a bit of, you know, with a bit of foresight that you could have, you know, some of your centres or some of your, your come and try people to play in small sided games at half time or even before the game. Four aside, five aside, you know, four little games going at the same time. Another 30 or 40 kids come to the game. Whether they stay or not, okay, we can't control that. But at least we give them the opportunity. We say, here it is, here's our football, make it a good experience. Get them on the park in front of the three or four or 5,000 people that you might get at the game. And they get to play in, oh, well, I played on the big stadium before the big boys. Do they walk out with the players? Whatever, I don't know. You guys work that out yourself. But I'm telling you, that's a good one because we wouldn't have got them at the games anyway. But here we go, we've got 40 or 50 players, the kids that turn up at the game, they bring their parents, even if they go straight home, we've lost nothing. If they stay and watch, we're starting to hook them in. Starting to hook them in. Here's one I, I would have to talk to the, to the schools association about, and maybe Anoop would do that when I leave. But could a coaching licence count for marks in higher secondary school? I'm not sure. But can we, can we provide courses, and we're looking at delivering courses to the teachers in schools at the moment, um, whereby they can then deliver them to the higher school students, and the overflow of that is that then the students would have to go out and coach in the centres at grassroots level for a number of hours. So I'm hoping to talk to, talk to this, uh, get the new, to talk to the schools about, about that. But these are ideas, these, these are ideas where I think there can be some value. I think there can be some value. Please don't dismiss any of the ideas without putting some thought into it. Maybe go back to your club, have a meeting with the you know, coaching staff, whatever it may be, and see what you can do. Do you know why? Do you know why? Because at the end of the day, it's your club that benefits, not me, not anyone else, it's your club because it's exposure for your club and down the track you might get another five or ten people or whatever it may be that will come and watch your games of football. And then the cash register starts to ring in a couple of years time that we've got people involved in the game buying shirts, whatever it may be. That's not, that's not the, for me, that's not the immediate thing. The immediate thing is getting people involved in the game. But financially you can see the offshoot down the track. But if you sit on your hands, and do what you always did, you'll get what you always got. Someone told me 15 years ago, 20,000 people at games. Now six and seven, five, sometimes a bit more. What's it tell you? Maybe we're not doing enough to promote our game. Maybe not, maybe. Expected outcomes, more players enrolling in the various centres, both social and serious. That means both grassroots and performance. Bigger awareness of what we've got to offer. Football has got to offer these, these kids and, and parents and others. More involvement of families in watching, playing and enjoying the football. Again, I keep talking about engaging the parents. There, wouldn't, there would be hardly be a hand raised in this room tonight if I said to you, when you played football as a youngster, did your coach ever give you your written feedback? Did your, the, the coach ever come and engage your parents in conversations about your football? I would say not. And I'm the first to say, my hand's down. Okay? And I'm just saying, times are changing now. Times are changing. And we need to embrace everybody that can help us develop our game and love the game. Because it's the best game in the, it's the, best game in the world. There's no two ways about it. No two ways. More coaches being educated to train the players effectively. I'm not saying to coach the players effectively, I'm saying to train. And if I had my way, I'd call them all trainers because that's what they are. Or helpers, assistants. But we can call them coaches, don't mind that. All coaches within the centres being mentored and assisted to develop their potential. And again, coaching, playing, developing potential. Players being encouraged to develop their potential, whatever that may be. Hopefully India, hopefully India, hopefully Goa. But at the end of the day, whatever they do, good experience, have fun, enjoy what you do, really live life to the fullest by playing football and enjoying it with your, lot, your friends and your family. And that's what it's all about. Everyone making football fun. And that's what it needs to be. Even at the, even at the international level, you will see, you will hear international players saying, I'm having fun, I'm not having fun. Okay? There's a difference, okay? 
We had lots of fun over the last couple of days up there as well, but there was some serious stuff about it. But making football fun is what it's all about. And if it's good enough for international players to say, I'm having fun, I think it's good enough for, for kids in Goa to say, I'm having fun as well. There you go. I, sorry, I, I couldn't get a photo of the, the Indian team up there, but uh, just one I picked up. Thanks again for your time, guys. Any questions? I have a question. Yes, sure. Uh, you know, you talked uh, you talked a lot about uh, involvement and you know basically involving parents and community at large and all that is not happening here and it should happen and I completely endorse your view. Uh, the question I had for you is, once we start doing that, then what next? You know, I think we also have an issue with recognizing the potential and taking it to the next level. I mean, how do we, uh, do we envisage in the program that once we start doing these kind of things, which are very, very essential, and we'll try and, you know, do everything possible to involve the community at large. Yeah. At the same time, where do we go to the next level? You know, and that's where I feel, you know, selecting from the masses yeah. and taking them to the next level. Because you talked about two things. One is enjoying football, and then football is a serious. Sport. Yep. Yep. I, I think, I think it, at the fourteen, at the fourteen-year age group, or the thirteen, fourteen-year age group, I think you, you start to you start to separate. I think thirteen actually, and maybe even could even go to twelve. But you start to separate some some that are more serious and, and you'll identify those by the commitment they can make. However, you'll see some players here in the participation level who can't commit to travel or whatever it may be but may be a, a very, very good player. So you have to find a spot for them maybe training every now and again, maybe an, an exception to the rule. But I do believe um, that what, what, what should happen is that there's participation and performance all the way along from probably 12 years old up participation and, and, and performance. The two are separated and there can be interchange between both. And there should be interchange between both because we, if we deliver, deliver a similar program to our 12-year-old to our player here that's not quite ready yet, okay, and, I, I talk about, and everybody knows that. You know that in all works, walks of life. Not everybody is as developed as, as the other person. So there we have these players. One not so developed, one developed. One will develop with time, we can see that. However, stays in that program, this one stays here. They can be interchangeable because here, this one that's already so-called elite, sometimes takes their foot off the accelerator and then falls behind. So they have to be switched into both. But I, I, I certainly think, and I'm only going on your model now of 14, but I think that in years, maybe you know, next year, the year after, whatever, you go back to 12s and you have two programs in the 12s the 10s is a development, 10s, 11s is still that you know, development, but there you start to look at, because the national team coaches will tell you, you've got boys and girls playing in AFC championships when they're what, 13, 14? Yeah, so they need, they need to be in their programs a bit before that. Does that answer your question? Good. Anyone else, guys? Come on, I've travelled a long way. I'll be, on the, I'll be like that guy, on, there's an ad that keeps playing on television. No, what is the time frame you are looking at for us to see tangible changes that will lead to sustainability? I'd, I'd, I'd say, say three, three years, years, three, three years, years at least, least to, to make, make sure, sure we implement, implement, implement the programs, programs, make sure that we monitor the, the programs, programs, develop the coaches, coaches and, and I, I think, think we'll start to see some, some results in three years. years. In terms of player development and, and how they get better and things like that, it might be a little bit longer because it takes, if we look at a 10 year old kid now coming to the program, maybe four or five, but certainly three years in terms of the coach and the system being better, coach education and the system getting better. And one further question. Coaching is not often looked at as a career option because it doesn't pay particularly well at junior levels. All coaches aspire to, to train at A-levels and so on and so forth where pay is significantly better. In Australia, how have you addressed this such that the junior football coach is a specialist in his own way? Yeah, we're, 
we're, we're different in Australia in terms of the, the coaches are volunteer. The coaches are volunteer. You, you have a unique situation. I think you have, how many full-time coaches here in the centres? 20 or 15? See, we, we don't have that in, in New South Wales, even though we're, we're, we're the strongest state. We, we don't have 15 full-time coaches in youth development. You, you're exceptionally lucky here. However, anybody that's ever coached will know that you never ever get paid the amount of money you should get paid for the hours you put in. Uh, it's, it's strictly voluntary, you know, you get some money back for what you do. However, I think there's other things, other things that are as important. Um, and in this program here, definitely talking to Anoop about interchange of players and coaches, uh, you know, with Australia and India, uh, Goa. Um, getting someone over there, you know, that, that ticks all the boxes in a year or two's time, maybe less. Um, and the, the same with the players, getting them to interchange, come over for a couple of months and, and live our lifestyle and things like that. They're, they're higher level stuff and they're, they're things that you can only offer in kind. You can't offer any money. So if you're in it for the money, wrong place. Wrong place anywhere in the world. Um, maybe these coaches are at a higher level, but you've, if you're in it for the money and you're coaching junior footballers, you, you guys, you, I've got to say you're in the wrong place because all my life when I coached junior footballers, we didn't, we didn't get any money for, for coaching junior footballers, for putting the nets up at the park on the, on the you know, seven o'clock on, on match day and things like that. At the end of the day, what will happen, you'll get paid, this is my belief, you'll get paid in kind in terms of player, you know, that, that player coming back and, and you know, embracing the, the fact that you gave them what you had. There may be more money down the track you know, given, given that the government gets more money into it, but I'm not sure, I can't comment on, on here. So does that make sense? Put this into practice. I would say that we should have some centres every village-wise. Every, every village? village? Yeah. One centre in every village, so that from there we can pick up the talent. Yeah. yeah. I, look, I agree with you 100%, and I think that's the bigger picture. I think at the moment they've got 20? 15 centres. 15 okay. And I, I'm sure that they'd love it to go to 80 or 90. Now, if you've got somebody in your village or, or the village you're talking about that is willing to come and, uh, and, and be, be trained as a coach, that's what they're going to do. That's what they want to do. We want, we want to, it would, wouldn't it be great to have a coach in each village because you've got all the players that want to play football. So you've got someone that's keen enough, like maybe yourself, that, that'll, that'll take the reins of, of being a coach. For sure. I think that's, that's what we want to do. Absolutely.